So let's see what we're going to be building. We have this home screen, which has this particular UI on top, and it has a search bar. Once we tap the search bar, we're taken to a new screen where we enter the starting point. Here I'm just going to pass in Apple and select the Apple headquarters. And here I'm going to pass in Tesla and select the Tesla headquarters. Once we select those, it takes us to the map screen where it basically shows both the particular places that we selected and it'll also create the path between them. That's not displaying right now because I haven't implemented it, but by the end of this course, we'll actually have the directions between these two points. We also get this swipeable bottom sheet, which we can swipe up and swipe down. So we're starting with an empty Flutter project and I've got it running here on my iPhone 12 simulator. There's just one thing that I've added already. That's this assets folder within which I've pasted in some images. These will be available to you in the GitHub link in the description. So I'm going to start by creating a screens folder inside lib. So I'm going to say new package, call that screens. Within that, let's create a new file and let's call that home screen dot dot. Here, let's create a stateful widget and call that home screen. Go ahead and import in material and save that out. Back in our main dot dot, I'm just going to get rid of this my home page class, which is there by default. And instead, I'm going to pass in our home screen that we just created. As expected, we have an empty black screen. Back in our home screen dot dot, let's start as always with a scaffold. Within the scaffold, let's pass in a background color and we want a white color. Next, we want to pass in the app bar. We don't want a title for the app bar, we want an image there. So in the title, I'm going to pass in image.asset. The asset we're looking for is in the assets folder. We want to go to the images folder and then we want uber.png. Let's have a look at that. Assets, images and uber.png. We also want to just give it a height of 70. As of now, it's telling us unable to load the asset. That's because we need to go into our pubspec.yaml. And here within Flutter, let's uncomment assets. And here we want to go into the assets folder and we want all the images from that. Save that. We can call pubget. And as we can see, we're already getting Uber here. So let's close that out. Again, we'll just get dependencies to remove that line. Let's just change the background color of the app bar by passing in background color and say colors dot white. We also want to remove the elevation. So we'll just pass in an elevation of zero that removes the shadow from the app bar. Next, we just want a person icon on the right. For that, we'll just pass in actions. Within that, we'll pass in a circle avatar. Let's give it a background color of colors dot gray and we'll give it a shade of 100. We then want to pass in a child. We'll call this the icon button, which is basically a clickable icon. In the on pressed, we'll just pass in an empty brace for now. And then we need to pass in the icon, which in our case is going to be icons.person. And for the color, let's pass in colors.gray. And we'll just give it a darker shade of say 500. Let's save that. We're getting that person icon. We want to just space it out from the side. So for the circle avatar, we'll encircle it with a padding and give it an edge insets dot all of it. That automatically moves it out from the right. Now in our body, we basically have these two large containers, then we have these four small containers, and then we have a search bar. Since they're spaced out vertically, let's put them into a column. So after the app bar, I'm going to pass in body. Here, let's pass in a column. The column will have children. Within the children, we want to pass in our two containers. So let's just pass in empty containers for now. Let's just give the first one a height of 100, the second one a height of 100. And let's just give them a color of, say, black. A color, colors.black. Save that out. For the second one, let's give it a color and let's call that colors.orange. So we're getting two columns which are vertically spaced, but we want the first two containers to be horizontally spaced. So let's wrap this container into a row and move the second container inside it as well. We're not getting anything right now because the container doesn't have a width. It's trying to take the width of its parent, which also doesn't have a width. So here, let's just wrap our container with an expanded widget. So we'll say expanded. And similarly for the second one, let's pass in expanded. They both will try and take up as much space as available. And there we're getting our two containers. Let's space out the containers by giving a sized box between them. Let's give it a width of 20. We also want to space it out from the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the column, the complete column with a padding. Let's just leave it with a padding of eight. 
and that's much better. So for these two action containers, let's go ahead and create a reusable widget. So within my lib folder, I'm going to create a new folder. Let's call that widgets. Within that, I'm going to create a new file and call that action container underscore large dot dot. Here, let's create a stateless widget and let's call that action container large. Go ahead and import in material, save that out. So we're going to need two things. We'll need the image that we need in the container and we'll also need this particular string text. So we need two values. We'll say final string. Let's call that title. And we need a final string of image. We have to go ahead and create the constructor. So I'm just going to option enter and create constructor final fields. Here, these two are going to be required. So I'm going to mark them as required here. So we know we want a container with a height of 100. We want to give it some decoration because we want the color to be gray as the background. So here I'm going to pass in decoration. That's going to be box decoration. We'll say color and we'll say colors dot gray. Pass in a shade of 200. We also want to pass in a border radius. So we'll say border radius dot circular and pass in 20. Let's pass in a comma here. To actually see the changes, let's go back to our home screen. Let's get rid of this container that we had created manually and instead let's pass in our action container large. Just so that the error goes away for the image, the first image is going to be assets, images, and then we'll pass in suv.png, which is an image we already have. Then we need the title, which is going to be ride. Let's just save that. It's complaining that they should have a constant before it. So let's just add constant modifier. Similarly, for this container, I'm going to remove this and instead pass in another action container large. Within this, again, we need the image, which is going to be assets, images, and we'll pass in box.png for the box. For the title, let's pass in package. And again, let's just add the const modifier. Let's save that out. So as you can see, we're getting those nice light gray boxes. Within these boxes, we need to show the image and the text. So back in action container large, we want the image and title to be spaced out vertically. So that means we need to pass in a column. So within the container, let's pass in a child with a column. The column needs children. Within the children, we want an image.asset. So the image string is going to be the image that we pass in. And we want to give it a height of 50. There we're getting our images. Below that, we need to pass in the text. So for the text, I'm going to say text. Pass in the title that we're passing down and save that. We want to just style the title to make the text bold. So I'm going to say style text style. Within this, I'm going to say font weight and set the font weight to bold. This can also be marked as const. So let's save that. Now we want to space these out vertically. We want the right text to be on the left and the icon to be on the right. So what we'll do is we'll wrap each of these into a row of its own. So here, let's wrap the image into a row. Then we can pass in main axis alignment and we'll say main axis alignment dot end. So the image goes right to the end. Similarly for the text, let's wrap it with a row and automatically it'll be aligned to the start because that's the default value. It'll be nice if we just give some padding to the complete column. So I'm going to wrap the column with padding and give it a default padding of eight. We also want to space these out vertically. So in the column, I'll pass in main axis alignment and we'll say main axis alignment dot space between and that that's much better. Just like we have our large action containers, let's go ahead and set up our smaller ones as well. So here in our widgets folder, I'm going to create a new widget and let's call that action container small dot dot. Again, here I'm going to have a stateless widget. I'm going to call that action container small. Pull in material dot dot. Here, what we're going to do is I'm just going to put in my action container large and modify it. So here, let's just copy everything out. Let's paste it in here. We obviously don't have the image and title yet. Let's pass that in here. Again, I'm just going to copy those. Paste that in, create our constructor and mark them as required. Now in our home screen, within our column, we need to pass in another row, which is going to have our small action containers. Let's display it and then modify the attributes of the container. So here below the row, I'm going to pass in another row. It's going to have children within which we'll pass in expanded. The child is going to be the action container small. For the image, I'm just going to pass in 
assets images and we want to access the car.png and for the title we'll pass in car let's save that i'm just going to duplicate that so now we have four of them and let's just fix these warnings by adding the const modifier let's save that jump into our small container here i want to just get it of the height the color is going to be the same and i'm just going to get it of the row from here and also the row for the text let's save that so that just moves our image and text to the center instead of giving the image a height of 50 i'm just going to give it a height of 30 and i'm just going to wrap the image with a padding so we'll say wrap with padding i also want to reduce the border radius so here we'll set the border radius dot circular to 5. now let's head back to our home screen and let's add a sized box first to space out both the rows see i'm going to say sized box let's just give it a height of 20 and next i want to space these out from each other by passing in a size box between them so i'll say size box and give it a width of 10. i'm just going to copy that and place it after each of the expanded widgets and that's starting to look better now the first one is the car for the second one i want to pass in train and change the title to train the third one is going to be a bus i need to pass in a bus here and lastly the text is going to be transit and the icon will leave it as the car icon so we've got both our rows set up the next thing we need to add is our text field so below the row i'm going to pass in a sized box of height 20 and then let's pass in a text field let's pass in a decoration the decoration is of type input decoration within this we need to pass in hint text and give it a hint text of where to let's style the hint by saying hint style we're going to give it a text style we want a font weight of say font weight dot 500 and we want a font size of 24. let's again add the const modifier and we can add that in here as well we don't want the text field to be empty so we want to pass in filled and set that to true so we'll get that nice gray color behind it for the fill color we can actually just set the color by saying colors dot gray and we want to pass in a shade of 200. as you can see it's giving us an error here now that this is not a constant value so now we actually need to remove const from text field since we're using a computed value and instead we can just pass const in here inside so that color is much better now we also want to remove this border so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass in border and set that to input border dot none so now when we tap this particular text field we want the user to be taken to another screen and we also don't want to show this input cursor so there are two things i want to change here firstly i want to remove the auto focus and set that to false so that it's never automatically focused and we also want to say show cursor and set that to false now when we tap it we don't see the cursor because we're not going to be entering anything here we're going to be entering it on another screen so let's add a on tap property within this we want to say navigator dot push we'll pass in material page route the builder again needs the context we need to point this to another screen so we'll call that screen search screen we obviously haven't created it so we'll get an error so let's go ahead and create that open up our sidebar within screens let's create a new file call that search screen dot dot here i'm just going to create a stateful widget call that search screen pull in material dot dot and save that out let's close that here we can pull in search screen now let's pass in a semicolon there save that out we also want that screen to open up as a dialog so we'll say full screen dialog and set that to true so now if we tap where to it takes us to a new screen which is a full screen dialog so let's head to the search screen here in the container let's pass in a color and say colors dot white also let's wrap this container in a scaffold so we'll say scaffold instead of child we need body let's save that and let's just pass in an app bar for now by saying app bar and there we can see we should be able to close out our full screen model so let's test that again it opens up and it closes out in the next video we'll go ahead and actually set up the search screen using the google places api